Hi everyone, it is Danny, and welcome to this update's video. I really hope you're having a fantastic start to your Friday. Now, we're going to be talking about what's going on across the Atlantic with focus being on the U.S. as well as the Caribbean. So, there is that next storm system across the U.S. and uh, there is that threat of damage and winds and even some tornadoes. So, we'll be talking about that as well as the Caribbean, the rainfall forecast for today, the wind and wave height forecast as well. And there is an update in relation to the upcoming hurricane season. So I know you guys may be sighing in frustration right now, but uh, this is a pretty important update. And I really think that we're not going to be backing down from this point in terms of what to expect. I think probabilities will only continue to go up for the hurricane season to potentially be a historic one. And I'll talk more about that soon, but let's get on with the update first for the Caribbean in the U.S. Here we can see that there is that next storm system already bringing its impacts. Uh, and earlier, this was from the Storm Prediction Center. We can see that enhanced risk of severe thunderstorms. So severe thunderstorms capable of producing damage and winds, some potentially up to 75 miles per hour and a few tornadoes are possible from today into early this evening from parts of the southeast into the Carolinas. The greatest chance of severe wind gusts will be from central and southern Mississippi into northwest Alabama this morning. So uh, that is from the Storm Prediction Center. And if you're being impacted by this, guys, please stay safe as best as you can. And many of these areas were impacted by a previous storm earlier this week that caused quite a bit of damage and uh, it resulted in a few fatalities as well, unfortunately. So please stay safe if you're being affected by that next storm system. And so let's drift to the Caribbean. We can see that it's a big contrast. Nothing much is really happening here right now. We've got those cloud patches coming in from the east, which are helping to bring some showers into the region. And even looking at the rainfall forecast for today, there we can see even some shades of yellows and oranges and reds popping up, especially near Dominica. So we'll see how that goes. There could be some substantial rainfall today. But across the Lesser Antilles, some intermittent showers are going to be possible. And it is a similar story for Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, and even parts of eastern, the eastern section of the Dominican Republic. Headed towards the ABC Islands, much not expected. Similar story for Haiti. And then for some areas in Jamaica, there could be some showers. Similar story over in the western side of Cuba. But from much of the country, as we can see, nothing is really expected in terms of any significant rainfall accumulation. Also for the Cayman Islands, parts of the Bahamas, and potentially the Turks and Caicos Islands. In Central America, it's a similar story for much of the countries. But as we head down toward Costa Rica and Panama, there we can see that uh, the rainfall chance is going to be there for some areas, especially near the Pacific coast. Northern South America, Colombia active as usual, similar story, Southern Venezuela, and even portions of the Guyanas as we head throughout today. Looking at the wind forecast for later this morning, we're seeing a lot of these purple and some blue shadings popping up. So it's going to be quite windy across much of the region today with winds up to 15 knots, even 20 knots at the Lesser Antilles, even the Virgin Islands as well and uh, near Puerto Rico as we head toward the ABC Islands. Similar story. Things will be a bit tranquil for portions of Jamaica as well as Hispaniola and sections of Cuba. Winds will definitely be kicking up though for Grand Cayman. And as we head close to the Yucatan right there, we can see some of those winds up to 25 knots within the area and also in the Gulf of Mexico. So winds are going to be kicking up today. And with that, uh, the wave heights as well. So this is later into the afternoon. We can see that green shade in off of Mexico and well off Belize right there. So out there, the seas could be up to six feet and a similar story across the central Caribbean to the south and east of Jamaica. As we head toward the Lesser Antilles for the Atlantic side of many of the islands, seas are also quite rough up to six, seven feet there and elsewhere across the region anywhere from one to around four or even five feet. So that is what is happening guys in terms of the forecast and now we want to go ahead and talk hurricane season. So the NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, 
said yesterday that there is a 73% chance of ENSO neutral conditions as we're going to be heading into April through June. So within that time frame from April to June, we could see a transition happening with the current El Nino to the neutral phase. Now, what does that mean? You may be hearing the term a lot and you may not have an idea of what an El Nino even is. No worries. Let's talk about it. In essence, it is over in the eastern and central equatorial pacific that region there when these sea surface temperatures are above average that is known as el nino when they are average that is neutral when they are below average that is la nina now with an el nino of course what happens there it impacts whether or not only for the atlantic basin and the u.s but on a global scale because we're talking about a very massive oceanic area so what happens is that during an El Nino, typically, typically, the hurricane season is suppressed. But last year was proof that it's not necessarily true because last year was ranked as the fourth most active season in recorded history. The 2023 season, yes, many of the systems remained offshore, which was good news because uh, the, uh, the effects of the season could have been exacerbated if many of these storms managed to move into the Caribbean or even up to the U.S. And typically in an El Nino season, there is below average activity. And to put into perspective, there are usually 14 storms on average. Meanwhile, in 2023, there were 20 systems. So uh, that definitely showed that an El Nino doesn't necessarily mean the season will be suppressed. And what was the factor that caused the season to not be suppressed? Well, that was the above average sea surface temperatures. And by the way, it's very concerning out there even now. This is a look at the latest update on the sea surface temperatures. This is an anomaly chart. So it's not showing the exact temperature but rather how much the current temperature of the various areas differ from what is typical of the area at this time of year. When we see those shades of yellows, oranges, and reds, that is indicating above average temperatures, meaning that the temperatures are warmer than normal. Meanwhile, the blues indicate below normal temperatures. White means that temperatures are pretty much normal within the area. But look at this area out in the Atlantic to the Caribbean. We can see mostly these above average temperatures and it gets pretty warm than average offshore of Africa. So that area has been very, very warm. And this is usually where most of the activity occurs in the hurricane season, at least the origin of many of these storms and hurricanes of the hurricane season annually. So that means that these above average temperatures, I don't believe they're really going anywhere. I think we'll only get warmer as we're going to be progressing towards the start of the hurricane season, but this spells trouble. It is the reason last year was so active, and it could be the reason we could see a historic season this year because not only will there be above average temperatures, but we could transition into a La Nina by the peak of the upcoming hurricane season. So that would mean that there could be less hostile conditions in terms of the upper level winds across the Atlantic basin. So basically, there won't be too much interference with these developing tropical waves, uh, which may become tropical storms or even hurricanes. And uh, let's, let's take a look at this graph here. Now, I know it may be very confusing, but let me break it down as best as I can. So there on the X axis, that horizontal line, we see these letters. So DJF, that's for December, January, February. Then uh, we go on to January, February, March, February, March, April, March, April, May, April, May, June, etc. And we can see these different colored bars at different heights as well. Now on the y-axis, that is the chance. And based on the color, we know which phase of ENSO we're talking about. So the red indicates El Nino, which we're in an El Nino by, uh, right now, by the way. And the gray indicates neutral conditions, that transitional zone. And the blue indicates La Nina. Take a look at how the uh, La Nina starts popping up as we head towards late spring and headed into summer. And we see that August, September, October, within that time frame, the El Nino chance is about 6 or 7% at that point and a very elevated chance of seeing La Nina return for the peak of the hurricane season. So we could enter neutral conditions as we head towards uh, 
between April and June, as Noah stated yesterday. And then eventually we could transition into La Nina uh, as we're going to be arriving at the peak of the 2024 hurricane season. So that could mean the season could be a historic one because we saw what happened last year with what was supposed to be a suppressed uh, activity and that didn't happen. So that could be exacerbated this year. However, that is not 100% certain. Yes, we are early on. Yes, there can be changes because it's the weather we're talking about. But I also want to point out another factor which I don't think is discussed a lot, which is the Saharan air layer. Now, this is a mass of dust and dry air that travels from the Sahara Desert in North Africa across the Atlantic and to the Caribbean and Americas. So that usually helps to suppress activity because it stabilizes the environment. A lot of dry air is something that tropical cyclones hate because even though, yes, the sea surface temperatures are very warm and yes, the upper level winds are not going to be interfering, but is the environment favorable in terms of the moisture content? So usually with all, uh, a lot of the dry air, that helps to limit the amount of moisture in the atmosphere. And that could actually result in us not seeing much happen if there is a persistent mass or persistent masses of dry air and dust coming off of Africa. And the perfect example of that was actually the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season. So I really thought that 2022, 2023 was a flip scenario because Literally, as the 2022 hurricane season closed and I saw that we pretty much had a, a, a near average activity, even though, yes, there were major storms such as Hurricane Ian, which devastated Florida and Fiona, which brought its impacts to Puerto Rico and even Nicole, uh, which affected Florida as well late in the season. I thought that what if next year during an El Nino season, we see above average activity? I literally thought about that before I even knew or uh, looked at anything in relation to the 2023 season so 2022 was the perfect example there were above average temperatures yes la nina yes but the dust was very persistent and to show nothing developed in august which is the first of such occurrence since the start of the century so uh, we really just have to wait and see what is going to unfold this year. And of course, I'm here to keep you guys posted as I always do. So that is basically what I wanted to share with you in this update video. And I really hope you found it to be quite informative. However, if you have any questions or if something I uh, discussed is not clear to you, please leave your questions in the comments. I will respond once I get the chance to do so. And remember to always be weatherwise.